All right, guys, we are going to explain the MS-460. This is the correct setup to run one correctly, okay? We got the MS-460 jug. We got a YD-100 bottom half, YD-100 rod, and a 50cc 38mm crank, which is actually 37.1mm stroke when you measure it out, okay? Now... At top dead center, on these sockets, you will see there's a gap up here. It's about 1.5 to 1.6 millimeters, just like an MS-660. And all that other crap that you hear about, 0.7, all that, 0.8, no, that's crap. It's because they don't do the crank correctly. And the other major reason... You're going to have some problems. Is if you see where mine is at right now. Top dead center. I'm only about 1.5 maybe millimeters. From going over the top of that exhaust port. That's just the design of this jug. And I'm going to explain it in a minute. Technically there's usually 2 millimeters. On the bottom of this skirt. Over that exhaust port on a stock saw. Okay, so top dead center, and you come down to the bottom, okay, and you see how much is left hanging out, and if I take this and wiggle it, solid, okay, so that eliminates all the piston ring and all that fun stuff that you see happen, these people that keep using YD100 cranks, okay, so... We'll toss a timing wheel on this and get some measurements. All right, so we're gonna turn this exhaust port. It's cracking open just at 100. We are at 160, it is fully open. We're at um, bottom dead center. We're coming back up from bottom dead center. The exhaust port is closing at 105. All right. We'll go back up here to the top dead center. And we're going to come down again. Our exhaust port again is cracking at 100. Okay. Our transfer just popped open. We are at a hundred, let's see, 25, 26, 27. So we're looking at 27 degrees of blowdown. All right, so we're gonna go down. Our intake is closed at, let's see, 76 degrees from top dead center. So we're going to start in there, we're going to go down 180, which is bottom dead center, we're right there. And we're going to start going back up. Alright, and it's going to start to open at 95. We're at top dead center. Which is, this port is completely open still. It's coming back down. And we're closing again at 76. So, there you go for the intake. Alright guys, so I want to note something. Especially like in the MS660 uh, as well. I showed you in that video. When the factory makes these cylinders... As you can see, right above my finger there, this is a used cylinder, by the way. Right above my finger, right there, is actually where the cutoff point of where the factory even finishes the cylinder wall. And as you can see, below that, there's maybe about three millimeters in a line, in a line. That's actually where my rings were stopping on my piston. So, I just wanted to note that, but the uh, top of the piston actually stops right about here. 
which is about 1.6, 1.5 millimeters from the top. And that's the correct spacing on a saw jug. <clears throat> I mean, you have to look at the design. They want maximum power to turn that chain when it's stuck in a log. So that's the idea behind it. They have a bigger squish. Now the ones that want to speed them up and all that good stuff, use a pop-up piston. It'll fill this gap. And that's how you can change your squish value. If you change it any other way, you know, the piston's going to either catch on this port or go down below this one and you're going to blow your bearings, destroy the engine. So I just wanted to make that clear. And then um, one other thing to note too, if you do want to do it by the piston, they do make pistons that have a longer skirt so that you can do this and uh, that's how a lot of the saw builders will do that for like competition saws and stuff and they deck the case and a bunch of stuff do it so all right guys so here is the 40 millimeter stroke crank out of a yd100 40 millimeters 0.9 same rod same bearing same piston and i would like to direct you to the top of this now as you can see, the piston is about maybe 0 0.6, 0 0.7 millimeters from the top. And that's what you hear people go, oh wow, and a lot of people think this is correct. And it's not. And I'm going to explain why here. Number one, if you notice, your skirt is just about going past the exhaust. Now up above here, if you notice, look. I can actually just barely it catches on that exhaust port because it's just going above it so one of the biggest reasons that the bearing in these keeps blowing out on multiple people and you see it and they go oh they just don't last long no they're using a YD100 crank with a 40 millimeter stroke even if it's even if this was a 40 millimeter crank and it came out to like I don't know 38.5 it's still gonna come really dead close to the top of this dangerously okay so I'm just saying that's it this is like just above it at this 40 millimeters 40.9 so I just want you guys to be aware of that and see it at the top dead center here. Alright, so I almost forgot about this. So here's the 40mm uh, YD100 crank, 40.9mm YD100 rod. So in the piston, there's a top end. On the uh, up, and as it's coming down, it gets to here. What happens is this crank is actually 2.2 millimeters longer that way. So it's pulling the piston down farther. And you actually pull it past the support wall here to where the port starts to open for your intake. And what happens is, just like the MS660, you get this. And you can actually hear the ringing noise just from doing that. So as this pushes back up, like in this direction, it's slamming this piston because it has no support there until it gets up over the wall, just like that, and now it no longer can move. So if you had it right there, see that? Let's go down a little more. We're getting there, all the way at dead bottom. Now it can move. So this is the number one reason why you hear the ringing sound. And I've had people that build these sell them. They're selling them to people for like 400 bucks, 350. And this is why, because they spend no time taking the crank apart and using the correct one with the rod. They just slap it on a YD100 bottom, push it out the door, and someone that doesn't know this ends up buying it and gets screwed. So. If you have one like this, your piston can catch up here. It slaps down here. 
And the bearing here is going to go. Because what's happening is, as this goes up and it slams, it jams. And every time it does that, it takes the life of that bearing and just... Or if it goes up here and it starts to catch because it's wearing, it'll start um, putting force down on it this way as the crank is going down and it'll blow the bearings out. So that's the number one reason why all the bearings keep blowing in these. It's not because of the power and all that. It's because the people building these and selling these to people don't do it right. Now there's some really good decent builders out there like Henson and all that. And they go through and spend the time to balance the crank. Put the right crank in. They set it all up right. And that's why it costs eight hundred dollars for him he paints them details them and that guy is amazing now i tried to do this with like a cheaper version that's why i was selling them at that had nothing but shipping issues and stuff with getting parts so it just it got annoying but i mean these are really reliable if they're built right and when you see someone selling them for 350 bucks i mean i've talked to a bunch of people that do sell them for that that's exactly what they're going to do, is just slap the tap half on a ID 100 pop. And that's what you're getting. So, I do not sell those in any of them. Out of all 284 that I did do, not had one crank bearing in any of them go bad.